All right, and now we are moving on to the tail portion of the MD-7, MD-8 helicopter uh, that we're building as a 7. Uh, so the tail assembly here, it calls for bags VG, VH, VI, and VJ over here. Fortunately, it's all here in one bag, VG, H, I, J. And it's all pretty much pre-assembled here. I don't know if everything has thread lock on it, so uh, as always, just to be smart, make sure I go through, make sure uh, the screws are cleaned up and that there's thread lock on all the little pieces. So I'm going to go through, do that, let you know how that goes. Uh, so everything is basically in its place as it's shown here. So uh, it saves you a lot of time, uh, less complicated. And then you've got this VK, uh, once we move on later, the boom, all of that hardware. Uh, and uh, so once we come back, talk about this, uh, probably put most of this stuff together, we'll see how pre-assembled all of this stuff looks once we take it apart. Uh, either just comment on that or show all the little pieces and then do some building before that. So uh, we'll come take a look uh, after we open this and see what we've got. Okay, so I went ahead and finished up the entire tail portion because everything in my tail assembly was uh, thread locked. Uh, these bolts here, uh, everything here, I like to put, uh, I took this little uh, grub screw here out and put some red thread lock on there because uh, I'm paranoid about that one coming out. Uh, so everything's nice and smooth, everything was tight, everything had thread lock on it. You know, definitely be sure to double check yours, uh, make sure everything is in order for you. Pretty simple and straightforward with everything else slide that on the boom, there's a little hole in the boom and uh, this little guy right here has something in the middle that goes in the hole once it lines up uh, take these two long uh, screws, put those through you can see on the bottom uh, the more you tighten that the more it clamps you don't want to overdo it, you don't want to compress too much but you want to make sure that there's no play the boom supports here uh, go on kind of like a uh, ball link ends uh, and they're pretty tough to go on so you got to push up pretty hard uh, but these were thread locked uh, this was not so I had to pull this one out and thread locked it uh, and it's loose right now so I can move it up and down uh, for when I apply the boom onto the frame uh, these needed some thread lock and some cleaning so I took that apart put the tail fin on here made sure it faces forward Got the boom supports with this uh, extra little clamp inside, and that's also loose right now. I uh, use the little zip ties to hold that on there. Uh, once I put this on the frame, again, that's another thing that I will tighten up just like uh, this part back here. So, torque tube, pretty straightforward. Um, it actually had all of the bearings inside, like mine had the bearings inside all in the right spots so that's all taken care of for you that's one of the parts that you know during a build it's always kind of a pain in the butt measuring the right spots getting the epoxy on the torque tube uh, sliding it in the boom because sometimes it's really compressed fit there's no fuss here all you have to do is just uh, slide in the torque tube uh, you'll definitely have to put these end uh, splines on on the end of it so you put that through got this little uh, screw to hold those in place everything slides in and fits great uh, so uh, that's make sure that's moving nice and make sure this rotates nice and smooth as well that almost like rotates on its own right there so everything's nice and smooth we've got the control rod here I uh, haven't put that in yet I will slide that in here add that and then that is basically the end of the tail assembly. Uh, blades come with the kit. Uh, you might, if you're making an 800, the MD7 boom, or the would just instead be the MD8 boom. It'll be longer. Uh, all that stuff's included. Uh, I think it has its own blades too. So I think that is about it now for the tail assembly. It was just a quick one. Uh, next we will move on to uh, back to the frame we'll put this on the frame get the motor mount all set up and all that stuff so uh, 
that part will be coming up here next. Okay, now we have the tail boom installed into the main frame section. Uh, pretty simple. I loosened up uh, these screws a little bit just to make sure it slid in here. Uh, there's also four screws here. Uh, we're screwing into plastic, so make sure that uh, you don't over tighten these screws. Just want to make sure it's uh, clamping the two halves. Uh, there's also little pin screws here on each side, so make sure you screw them out before putting the boom in. And there's also holes in the boom, so make sure you line up those holes with these holes here. What I did is I slid it in, made sure when I was turning the, the main uh, head that the tail moved, and then I took a little piece of, uh, a thin piece of uh, wire and stuck it through here and made sure that I lined it up and that I was able to push that through and then on the other side just to make sure because it's kind of hard to see because everything's black and it gets dark or you can shine a light in there maybe get a good view but make sure that you're punct you're going through where the hole already exists and you're not puncturing a new hole in the boom uh, pretty simple line up here the carbon fiber uh, tail control rod uh, you can just loosen these and place it right in there uh, very simple and straightforward got the blades on there uh, moving the head spins that. So nothing new here, uh, just a simple taking the tail boom, sliding it in here. Uh, one thing to be sure of, make sure you're careful here because this is, I mean you got to push pretty hard to get this on here. And uh, so uh, the ball link pliers that I had didn't really fit this, so I had to kind of put uh, needle those pliers on both sides and apply pressure evenly. If you push too much, you might crack this and uh, have to replace it, so you won't want to do that. So that's uh, the whole assembly put together with the tail boom and the mainframe, and we'll come take a look at the motor mount in the next video. Okay, now we're moving on to the motor mount section, uh, getting this stuff all done, getting the motor put on here. I've got a uh, nice little Scorpion HK4530-540 or 450kV that we're going to put on this bad boy. Uh, motor mount uh, looks almost pre-assembled. Got the pinion and all of the hardware in there. Uh, looks like on the pinion there's kind of a shorter part and a longer part. The shorter part's going to face the bottom. And it says you also want to line it up so that the main gear is flush with that shorter part on the bottom. If it's flush with the top, then the way the mesh lines up is going to cause your, your gear to be destroyed. So make sure those line up on the bottom like this uh, when you put that together. So we're going to put this whole motor mount together, show you that thing complete by itself, and then we'll put that in the airframe and, and take a look at it and uh, see how, how it works lining up the mesh. So. Okay, here is the motor mount assembly. Uh, right now we still have the pinion on there pretty loose uh, because I'm going to adjust it against the gear mesh make sure they're lining up on the bottom like it says in the manual. Uh, one thing you'll find is you have to have this bottom part attached before you put the motor on because if you try to put the motor on this part you'll find that you don't have access to these screws here so put that part on then that brings you to another problem uh, you've got these four screws this one's really easy to access this one's not too bad through here this one's not too bad through here but this one right here is quite a bit challenging and if you don't have like a um, so well what I recommend doing is just putting it in there tighten it by hand as much as you can then use some uh, needle nose pliers or something tighten it as much as you can that way and then get one of those little uh, you know L angled uh, hex drivers and the short end will go in there and then just tighten it with that um, otherwise you know if you hit it from the angle here you risk a chance of kind of messing with the threads in your motor uh, you know, you, if you want to do that, it's up to you. Uh, you can also maybe get away with just doing the three bolts. I'm sure it'll stay on there pretty well. Sometimes even two is enough. Uh, but I like to have all four of them on there. Uh, so that's that. Uh, we will put it into the frame. This part will be facing towards the main gear. And uh, um, then we'll be able to adjust the mesh on there. Uh, so we'll be using the provided hardware to uh, get that on the frame and we'll show you how that thing looks uh, once we get in there and uh, adjust the mesh and let you know if we have any tips for that. Okay now we have the motor actually mounted onto the helicopter. Uh, as you can see I had to push my uh, pinion probably lower 
uh, towards the lower end of, of this motor mount. Uh, probably just because I used the washer, uh, two washers in between the red and the black gear. Uh, so I had uh, enough spacing here between the frame and this gear. Uh, so push that down. Pretty easy to adjust the mesh. Uh, you leave these two loose on both sides and you can either push it in by hand or you can make fine adjustments uh, with this thing and check the mesh. Uh, you want to make sure it's not too tight but it's not too loose. So what I like to have essentially is to have a just a little bit I don't know if you can hear that. So there's just a little teeny tiny minuscule amount of wiggle. Just a little bit, not a lot. Um, you want to make sure that you can get basically like a piece of paper in between. Uh, if it's too tight, it's going to be too much load on your motor. Don't want to do that. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward. It all meshes together. Uh, my shaft is a little bit too long. I'm going to have to get in there and shave it. I tested my batteries and there still is some space, but probably just going to cut the shaft off a little bit. I also noticed that I had my <laughs> my servos on backwards earlier, so I flipped those around. Um, so I'll put a note on the video to uh, not do what I did and uh, do what it, do what I've got now. So uh, at this point, I've got the Icon fly barless controller mounted and the servos plugged in. I haven't done the setup yet, uh, so I need to go in and do all of the programming of the fly barless controller and the electronics and everything. Uh, get the ESC put on there. Uh, I will let you know if I have any tips. Uh, one thing I can tell here we've got these little notches here which is supposed to be zero degrees. So when you're setting that up that's a nice little guide to get that going for you. So it uh, looks like we've got all sorts of uh, turnbuckle um, linkage rods here. So those should be easy to make fine adjustments on. Uh, so we're going to go back through the manual, check the distances. I think we had like 17 millimeters, uh, but there's little parts in the manual where you could see while you're setting up the frame what the distances were recommended. And the kit includes some uh, servo horns. These ones work for what I have, the Alliance, which have the standard Futaba setup, but if you have different servos, you may have to go purchase some of your own uh, servo horns. So we will move on to getting the electronics done and show you that whole thing uh, when it's ready to go. Okay, now here we are with some final comments and final tips uh, of the MD7. Uh, make sure, uh, so they could probably fix this later, but uh, I had to sand quite a bit above the main gear here or this auto rotation gear because uh, it was rubbing up a little bit against the frame and the main gear was also rubbing up a little bit but I solved that one not by sanding here which you can do you can sand above that uh, but I took the two washers that were available and put both of them in between these the red and black gear instead of putting one here above it and one below it and it seems to work out just fine uh, over here everything still lines up no problem so a little bit of sanding. Uh, you're going to be sanding the frame anyway, so that's good to do. Another thing, uh, you might want to screw the cyclic servos uh, or the horns on before you uh, you install the servos because once you get them in here, trying to get to them here uh, with the motor in is a little difficult. So, I mean, alternately, you can not put the motor in and then get the servos in there first. Uh, but also if you loosen the servos up just a little bit, you can kind of bend them so that you can get access to them. Uh, but if they're really tight and then you've got the motor in there, it's going to be hard to access those. As far as uh, the tail servo, in order to get access to this, I realized once it's installed and everything, it was a little difficult to get to. So uh, what I did was just unscrewed both of these screws on this back support and then loosened the front ones so I was able to push the whole thing down and then access it uh, when it was time to uh, set up the fly bar this controller so uh, in order to do that yeah remove this back one and then just slide it down so you can get in there and get the horn on uh, nice and level in the tail servo 
Uh, also, after your first flight or so, just make sure you check these collars on the top and the bottom. Uh, make sure they've got thread lock, maybe even some red thread lock, uh, and make sure it's, it's tight enough. So after a flight or two, just go back and make sure it's really tight on the top and the bottom collar, just to be safe. Another thing, so we'll notice here that the tail is actually lagging. So usually it's leading, which means uh, the arm has is leading the blade. Where here we can see that the blade goes this way, counterclockwise, and the arm is lagging. So if you're used to situations where like left on your rudder makes your tail slider go right, and right on your rudder makes your tail slider go left, this is lagging, so everything's going to be backwards. Uh, so this setup, when I go right on my rudder, I see from standing behind it, the tail pitch slider goes right, and then also left on the rudder, tail pitch slider goes left. Also, when correcting, if I push it this way, instead of seeing the slider go the opposite direction, we'll see the slider go the same direction that the tail is being pushed. So if you spin it up and it starts spinning really fast, chances are you're probably used to a leading edge type of tail and you'll have to go reverse uh, that setting in your fly barless controller. Uh, last tip, these carbon fiber uh, or these tail support rods, when you're pushing on these uh, they're really big and really thick so uh, make sure you, you uh, use needle nose pliers and get some even pressure on both sides and then press it down. Uh, if it goes over, it might break, or if you give, get an uneven amount of pressure, you might see it crack. Uh, and if that does happen, they're, they're screwed in here, and you've got, from the other size, um, support rods, either MD7 or the MD8. You have um, some support rods for that one, so you do have some spares, just in case you do get one of these that crack. Uh, so that is the MD7 helicopter build. Uh, well, MD7, MD8, which was built as a 700 size in this case. Really nice helicopter. I've, I've taken it out for a maiden flight now. Uh, it was kind of windy, so it wasn't too much, but man, this thing is a monster. Very solid machine. So everyone enjoy your MD7 helicopter as much as I have. And uh, if I come up with any more tips, I'll let you guys know.